Get ready to open your mind. Drones! They're no longer science fiction anymore. We're using drones to explore unknown new worlds. They're being tested on lonely highways and above. From the early days of radio-controlled hobbyists to missions on Mars and beyond, drones are already here, impacting our world from unmanned tasks in supermarkets to mapping our communities and saving lives. Drones create fantastic new ways to explore and discover. Programmed to operate in other worlds and flown with tomorrow's technology today, drones are changing our world. Join us and open your mind to drone technologies. Thank you, Uda. Uda is our unmanned teaching assistant, and we've introduced him this week for Drone Safety Awareness Week. Really excited to be here. We're going to have a roundtable discussion on safety, and I'm really blessed to have three good friends here. I've got uh, Jim Cheney, who is a FAA safety team uh, program manager, uh, Brian Spratt, the president of the Atlanta chapter of AUVSI, and a Facebook administrator, Jack Jeffrey with Georgia Drone Pilots. So today being the fourth day, we're going to learn how to start a program. And we're actually not going to start learn how to start a program. We're going to talk about safety because there's a whole bunch of different versions of how safety is being done out there. And as you can tell, I'm wearing an orange safety vest. I'm going to recommend to you that if you're not, not aware, the FAA has got a great website, faa.gov slash UAS, and go into that, access it, navigate, and discover. And for more tips on public safety and government, we've got that right here. So we all realize that safety is important. And the only way that the industry is going to progress further is if we start implementing some more safety procedures. And like I said, I'm very lucky today to have three distinguished guests. And we're going to just talk about safety and some of the programs that are being run and things of that nature so that we can help the communities develop safe practices. So with that, I'm going to introduce my very first guest, uh, Mr. Jim Cheney. He is a program manager with the FAA safety team, um, and he is, tell us, uh, let's get it started. Jim, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, thank you, Lamar. Uh, yeah. But don't forget uh, uh, Roger Williams is here also. Uh, oh, I know, I know. But I advertised you as the guest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's the one that uh, keeps me in line. Uh, I've been with the FAA for uh, almost five years now, and I'm basically new in the uh, front line, uh, or not the front line, but the fasting program manager position. So, you know, Roger will straighten me out or shut me up if Start wrong. <laughs> uh, I, my aviation career uh, extends about 20 years, and my specialty was more uh, Part 141 operations and 135 operations. Uh, the drone business is changing rapidly every day. Uh, you can't, basically, you can't fly these things without being safe, without causing a lot of damage or or injury to yourself or, or other people that you may be flying over. Uh, I was at Daytona Bike Week a few years ago and uh, saw a drone flying about three feet above probably over a thousand bikers going up and down Main Street. And uh, this guy had no uh, UAS certificate. Uh, he had no clue about anything. But then again, this was three years ago. So, you know, everything is rapidly uh, changing. Uh, if it's uh, a lot of people say, well, it's not in the regulations. It's, it's not in the policy. It's not in this. It's not in that. You know, just because there's not a regulation on it, something hasn't happened yet to make a regulation. So if, if you think it's not safe, it probably is not safe. Uh, you know, with with Lamar's expertise, you know, I'm learning from him. He's not learning from me. You know, oh. you know we're I, we're airplane pilots. <laughs> no, but don't sell uh, yourself short. I'm I'm learning from uh, you guys every day. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Well, you know, we we I had a, a a captain call me from the Rock Mart prison, I guess it's called, and and says, Jim, there's a there's a drone flying over the jail. 
or uh, over the prison yard. What, what, what can I do? And I said, you're the police shoot it down. <laughs> But, you know, that may not be the right answer. <laughs> but, uh, we're all learning from, from this. But like I said, if you think it's not safe, it probably isn't safe. And uh, it's something that you need to address. If if you call us and, and we don't know an answer right away, we'll definitely find an answer. But understand that a lot of regulations aren't made, made until something happens. But if we can point it out before it happens – then maybe we can uh, have something done about it. But uh, Roger, you want to throw something in there? Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, this is Lamar. Lamar, this is your program. When you're ready for me, just to- yes, I am ready for you, Roger. I wanted to get the FAA was was the opening speakers. So so thank you. Anything that you can participate, be great. Okay. So it's, it's, well, just a little bit about me, Jim. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done, man. I'll be, I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> step on you. Again, I work with uh, Jim Janey. My name is Roger Williams. And uh, uh, just like Jim, uh, you know, to be part of the FAA, you got to have some background in aviation. Can't be ditch digging and that's it. But um, I got right at uh, 40 years in, uh, in aviation, technical operations. And uh, 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 I don't know if any of you have been to any one of my presentations when we were out doing face-to-face meetings. Got about eight years in uh, Marine Corps. Uh, avionics, F-4s and F-18s, and followed that with 22 years of Delta Airlines. Uh, that's technical operations, of course. I was an avionics mechanic for eight, eight of those years, and then a 12 years inspector uh, following that. And um, I left Delta Airlines. I've been with the FAA some 10 years now. So a principal avionics inspector, and finally uh, took this position, fast team program manager. And I don't know if Jim mentioned this, but as a FAA safety team, we're the program manager. So uh, we uh, work with Lamar, who's one of our um, drone pros or drone professionals. And our job in the FAST team is uh, we're looking at reducing aircraft accidents, aircraft incidents, aircraft pilot deviations, and runway incursions. And now uh, UAS events, uh, small UAS events. And we do that through training, outreach, and education. And so that's kind of like what we do. So we kind of collaborate with uh, industry professionals uh, like Lamar and others, and especially this Drone Safety Awareness Week to uh, bring awareness of drone safety, uh, anything that uh, uh, could compromise uh, safe flight in the national aerospace system. That's our job. We, uh, myself and uh, Jim Cheney, he's the ops counterpart. Uh, we have some, uh, 50, some 50 reps around the state of Georgia that we collaborate with and we assist, uh, you know, I don't know, we assist them more, they help us get the word out on uh, how to uh, how to fly safe. And um, and I, I think this is a great thing. And I appreciate uh, uh, Mr. Alice or Lamar inviting us. Uh, you talk, talking about an event. I was just sharing this with Jim, uh, I believe yesterday, uh, uh, with that Hurricane Zeta that we just had. Um, I was just, uh, there was a knock on my door and you know, a guy walked up, you know, like they do sometimes, hand me a card, said, hey, do you, you, know, you need your roof inspected? Notice that there's a couple of shingles that possibly came loose. And I thought he was just kind of juicing me looking for work. And uh, he says, we can give you a free estimate. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, I've been thinking about it. And I was going to call my insurance company to have it evaluated. I was looking, I mean, my roof is kind of high. Anyway, he says, don't worry about it. You know, we can take care of it. We got a drone. <laughs> and yes. I was thinking, okay, quite interesting. I said, I didn't say I was FAA or anything. I said, I'm curious how this is going to work because I've never seen it before. So he bolts, you know, because he was looking at another neighbor's house. He bolts over with this drone. It pops up. He, without using the, the app or anything, shoots this thing about 300 feet, zips around my house, and we're all out in the, in the driveway. He's zipping around my house, and he's just, and I'm thinking, this is the most interesting thing. I'm asking him, hey, man, is, are you registered? Yeah, 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 I'm registered. I said, <laughs> I said you know, this is business operation. Are you part 107? He's like, well, what are you talking about? What? what are you, you know, <laughs> yeah. hey, oh. And I'm thinking, from that point on, we had a lively conversation when I said, you know, my name is Rob, I'm with the FAA. All of a sudden, that drone came immediately down. 
and we started talking, start talking about that. So just like you said, uh, uh, Elmar, Lamar, uh, this yeah. is a very interesting uh, time because um, in dialoguing with this guy, he was talking about how many of his counterparts are actually using drones for roof inspection, all kinds of inspections and, and, and these kinds of things. And I think it's important that we get the word out in terms of safe life. Well, that's one of the things that I really like about this week is that having the National Drone Safety Awareness Week, we're actually getting the chance for the public to see that the, uh, you know, the FAA is a friendly organization that's actually out there to try to help. And so I'm glad that they're getting a chance to, to meet you and to meet Jim uh, in this event. Um, now, when you're working with this, uh, you don't have anything to do with the enforcement of the my understanding you you're just to make the help make the airspace safe the national airspace am i correct in that you want to take that jim we don't do any enforcement uh we don't do any investigations uh, uh roger has to reel me in every once in a while because uh i was a <laughs> inspector for you know the last four and a half years and yeah. you know did the enforcements and the investigations and uh they keep telling me roger smacks me upside the head with a hat and says no we white hat on now a white hat <laughs> uh, no we you know education that's uh, if we see somebody doing something wrong you know we will have a discussion with them like roger was saying you know he was educating these these guys on the operation of their drones so and today is the and i hate saying this but today is the more nicer more gentler faa you know <laughs> but uh you know if, if it's if no, we don't do any of the uh, investigations or any, any uh, enforcement. No certificate of action, no investigations. And yeah. there's another thing that we do, um, and uh, because we're the yes. Kindler General FAA, if you have issues with other FAA inspectors, you know, sometimes we, we get a couple of hatchet men out there who really kind of um, – come down hard. We, we tend to be arbitrators and mediators with that. We, t we try yeah. to work through whatever issues there are in a very nice, friendly way. Yeah. So, we, that's fasting. <laughs> we, uh, we try to keep your certificate in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I think it's time to time to move along. Uh, I, and right. thank you, guys. I'm going to move over to uh, Brian Spratt. He is the president of the Atlanta chapter of uh, AEVSI, which is the Association of Unmanned Vehicle Systems. And uh, he's a good friend. And Brian, tell us a little bit about AEVSI and some of the safety things that uh, that they're part of. Sure, be happy to. Uh, I will point out. I saw Jim has a nice hat from the FAA. This is what I get from AUVSI. <laughs> so talk about changing times and things that happen. I get masked. But... Okay, everybody, put your mask on. We got to make it only about ten inches away from you here. <laughs> so I, um, I've been involved with AUVSI probably for about the last uh, five years. Uh, my company, Silicon Force Electronics, has been involved with AUVSI for uh, probably going on fourteen or fifteen years. So my company basically is more the internals of the drone. We build rugged circuit boards. So we deal with a lot of more military side than, than anything. Uh, we build gimbals, uh, some of the autopilots and control boards. That's what Silicon nice. Forest does. So that's how I got, got involved with AUVSI. Became the vice president, uh, I guess about three years ago. And then when Elizabeth uh, Wharton left for a new job, everybody took a step back and I was the only one who didn't react quick enough so now i'm the president of uh, the atlanta chapter so that's how things uh how things happen but uh i think a great website to to know is basically auvsi.org that's one easy site to go to there's links there that will go to the faa site and many sites around for um, information um when it's talking about safety some of the easiest things they have is uh, kind of an app you can put on your your phone and it's basically before you fly is the app. And it's gonna you know, obviously give you a lot of the general rules for somebody flying of, you know, don't go over 400 feet, don't fly near aircraft, don't fly over people. Um, and it's also gonna tell you about the airspace you're in. When you put the app on your phone, it knows where you are and you can then get an idea of, oh, I need to have this, you know, um, filed with FAA or all the things you need to know around that. 
So those are some of the key things around, uh, you know, safety that AUVSI is promoting for just the general user. And then another level, if you already have your part 107, they have a top program, which is basically your trusted operator um, program for uh, a higher level that would give somebody um, who's gonna go out and hire a pilot, A being part 107 is one, but if you're also a top certified uh, pilot with AUVSI, it just gives you another little feather. Uh, so those are some of the programs AUVSI is, is doing to promote the safety just like we are this week. Well, I certainly do miss what we did last year for uh, safety week. We had that event down in Fairburn where we had all those kids and uh, that was really, uh, it was really nice to see so many people get involved and uh, learn about safety. I wish we could do it this year, but it looks like we're just virtual. So hopefully we'll get back to do that. And I know they, uh, they put our event that we did in Atlanta into the AU, AUVSI magazine that went out um, about a month and a half after that. So we got some good press from a, a fun time and, and teaching kids how to fly safely. Well, and AUVSI has got a big event coming into Atlanta next year, don't they? Again, I, I put my mask on to, to, to hope <laughs> that we can. But yes, the uh, exponential sure. event is going to be here in Atlanta next year. Uh, hopefully it's the first week of May and uh, right now all the plans are going forward. It was virtual this year, uh, went from Boston to Dallas to virtual. So hopefully yeah. we'll come back uh, to Atlanta next year. Well, I'm excited for that. Well, thank you, Brian. Um, I don't have any other uh, questions to ask. I, uh, you know, as far as safety, I think you've covered everything that AUVSI is about. And it's not just about aerial uh, technologies. They've got uh, maritime, uh, land, uh, even space. And yep. yeah, it is, a, it is a remarkable organization to be part of. And once you're part of that, you're, you're not just with pilots, you're with all different uh, facets of drone technology. And it is really a great place to get started. Um, of course, I, I'm featured as the uh, an aerial guy, but uh, I've learned so very much about other items that go along. And that leads us to our third guest, and I'm really excited to have him here today, Jack Jeffrey. He is the administrator of a Facebook page for Dr Georgia Drone Pilots. Now, why did I bring him in? Because he actually works with the general public on uh, on a daily basis because he runs this page, which is what I think you told me only 15 members away from hitting a thousand. So if everybody today signs in to Georgia Drone Pilots, you'll hit that thousand mark. So, um, Jack, I'm really excited for you to be here today. You have uh, um, you have taken the industry and uh, brought it into the the regular person's use and you see things on a different level than a lot of other people do. So can you tell us about uh, your uh, affiliation and how you see safety and everything else with uh, what you see in the market? Of course. And before I do, I want to thank Lamar, Brian Rogers and Jim for uh, letting me be on here with you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, started Georgia Drone Pilots online because I saw a need in the community to uh, connect with other pilots. Um, you know, a lot of these people, you can just go out to, you know, Best Buy and just get a drone and there's a, you know, there's a learning curve to it. And, you know, it really does take experience and knowledge to get into it. I think a lot of people are trying to, uh, you know, learn more about it. And uh, the group kind of brings the community together. There's a lot of top pilots in it. There's a lot of newbies in it. And to be able to go on there and, ask some of the questions that newer pilots have and you know the older pilots kind of come in and uh you know give some direction you know also at some of the meetups i mean we've had guys come out to meetups that uh you know never even had a drone and uh you know they they get some advice and the next week they're coming out with a drone they're taking their first flight um so it really is something quite special it's growing uh, exceptionally fast and uh you know we're excited to be a part of it well, we're so glad to have you, Jack. It, you know, you see a lot of newbies, uh, well, new pilots. Um, mm -hmm. what's, uh, what's the most frustrating thing about, uh, is, it, is it the lack of knowledge or the lack of awareness to, to get the knowledge to be safe? I think it's the experience. You know, I think there's, a, you know, experience flying, you know, knowing what the drone can do, knowing the limits, knowing the rules, the experience of it all. 
you know, I know Roger touched on, uh, you know, the roofing guys and, you know, that's another big industry that's coming up with drones. You know, a lot of these roofing guys, they go out there, they see, you know, other roofers using drones, you know, they don't want to get on the roof. It's dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go out, you can get a, you know, a mini two, which is a, a beast of a drone for the size that it is. And, you know, you can start flying it around and, and they don't really know the rules yet, you know, and they can take it up and zoom around the house and do all those types of things. And, uh, you know, giving them the knowledge of, you know, what they are doing, what airspace is there. Maybe they're at a house next to Hartsfield Jackson. They don't even know what's going on with it. Um, and, you know, I think safety really comes down to, uh, you know, the future of it. I mean, it's in the technology. You know, I, I see, you know, DJI's come out with their new stuff and, you know, it's got the, uh, you know, the geo fencing and, uh, you know, it limits drones from taking off, maybe how high the airspace is. Um, you know, I, I think safety really relies on that. It's kind of like, you know, the speed limit on the highway is 65, but people still go 80, right? If you want to limit it to 65, you've kind of got to limit the technology to that and put a governor on that. Um, so I really see there's, you know, the safety and the, the technology have kind of got to come together for everybody and, uh, you know, join forces into making it safer. That's a great point. So you're saying the manufacturer uh, controls uh, a lot of the safety issues that we as pilots run across. I mean, a little bit. Yeah, they definitely have some control about, you know, how far the drone can be pushed and, you know, what's going on with it. Um, but, you know, I think they're doing a better job of, you know, some of these geofencings that are going up, you know, making, uh, you know, the maps more aware on their systems about where airports are, what the restrictions are. Um, obviously, you know, taking a, you know, 107 test is a big thing. Um, you know, to me, it's kind of like this. When you get your driver's license, you, you know, you can't, you can't start driving a car until you have your driver's license, right? And, you know, to a certain degree, you know, it kind of should be the same with a with a drone, you know, whether you're flying recreationally or 107 like it, you know, there are rules and things that you should know before you take to the air. And I feel like, you know, the Georgia drone pilots, you know, the group, we kind of help give a, a little bit of information out. Obviously, we're not a school or a teaching program. We're just a Facebook group. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we're definitely giving, you know, trying to get the word out and trying to make it safer every day. Well, is there any way that uh, with uh, Georgia drone pilots with um, that FAA or AEVSI, there there could be a collaborative event of some sort to meet and greet? Would that? I mean, we would definitely we would definitely be open, you know, to that and and would, uh, with open arms, you know, if we could combine. I think I think even just having a relationship, you know, the FAA to pilots is this big, you know, feared. Uh, you know, monster, you know what I mean? And it's, and it really shouldn't be like that. And, mm. you know, it's kind of the unknown, you know, the unknown of, you know, what it is and, you know, what's going to happen and stuff. And, uh, you know, like, like what Jim said at the beginning, the, the industry is growing every day. It's changing every day. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an exciting industry to be involved in, you know? I, I, I totally agree. That's why I'm in it. Um, well, one of the things I'd like to do is I, I'd like to ask each one of y'all um, if there was one thing that you could see that would help bring safety in. Is there anything in particular that you can see that needs to be addressed? Uh, well, I want to start with uh, you, Jim and, and Roger. Um, is there anything that you can see that would help make the environment safer or things that we could do to help you make it safer? Well, the the thing is, is I, I agree with Jack. I mean, you got to have, uh, it's best to have some type of a certificate so you know, you know, what you're doing and why you're doing it and how you're doing it and where you're doing it. Because, uh, yeah, they go out and buy a, a, a little drone and the first thing you know, they're flying around, uh, you know, under Hartsfield's airspace. Right. Uh, I remember the first investigation I did uh, on a Monday morning. I came into the office and there was this this large drone and large. I mean, it was it was larger than a normal drone, maybe about two feet long. And uh, I asked around, I said, what's this doing on my desk? 
And they said, well, it was found in somebody's backyard, which is uh, uh, adjacent to or connected to a private runway. Well, you know, we had to go through certain channels. Even myself and, and Roger has to go through different channels to find out who owns that, uh, that number that's on the drone that's registered. And uh, I found the guy and I called him up and asked him if he was missing something. And he said, yeah, I lost my drone. Well, yeah. What do you mean you lost your drone? And he said, well, I cranked it up and, and, and I got up in the air and it just went by itself. I had tried to shut it off and everything and it just kept going. Well, it ended up two miles from his house, yeah. you know, and that's, that's something that needs to be, you know, the, 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 the manufacturer needs to know about that, you know? And, and I told him, I said, well, uh, did you let the manufacturer know that this thing ran away? Oh, no, 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 no. I said, well, you know, you're not supposed to fly at night. Right. And he says, Oh, I never flew at night. And I, Got his little SIM card, and I said, "That's not what it shows on here." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, but he knew nothing about it, so he yeah. he got it for. Uh, he said, "Well, my wife bought it either it was Christmas or birthday," and the next day he was out flying it, and yeah. he knew nothing. He knew nothing about the rules, and I said, "Well, you know, you can be charged about ten thousand dollars for what you just did, but see, that's not our job. Our job is to educate." So yeah. I gave him a, a bunch of paperwork to read and uh, don't know if he ever got it. I gave him his drone back and I said, man, you, you need to, you know, do this, this, and this, and, and read these, uh, this information packet. But the thing is, yeah, we just need to educate people more. Exactly. On, on what's going on because even we're daily having to update because they keep changing things and, mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to get, I don't want to say it's going to get worse, but it's going to get more more rules and more regulations and more policies, uh, not just with the FAA, but with uh, city and county ordinances. You know, uh, they're, they're, we I don't think we did. We just put a restriction over law enforcement buildings and, and airspace above law enforcement. But the thing is, you see on the uh, on YouTube. Uh, all the Videos of, of what they're making drones do and it's 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 very uh oh man i don't know and, and lamar we were talking this morning about uh uh drones flying over the jail houses and the prison yards and dropping in contraband to mm -hmm. include weapons you know and uh so but yeah the thing is is more education you know, we, we've got to, and, and you're doing it, Lamar, and I'm sure Brian's doing it, and, and Jack is definitely doing it also. And, you know, of course, me and uh, Roger do what we can, but like these little forums like this are outstanding for getting the drone community in here and listening to, to people like uh, you and, and Jack and Brian. And uh, I don't know about me, but, uh, and Roger. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, Roger, you got anything to add to that, man? Uh, you know, just kind of piggyback what you said. I remember years ago, um, I was doing a, quite a bit of traveling when, um, when I first came to the agency, and my wife came to me and said, listen, um, uh, you're gone, and, you know, I just don't feel safe. I need something here to make, to, 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 uh, make me feel more comfortable. And so I went down to the, lo the local gun and pawn shop, <laughs> picked up a fire. You know, I picked up a firearm and I thought, you know, I hadn't, didn't think much of it. I filled out a form, they did a background check, and next thing you know, they handed me this weapon. <laughs> right? yeah. I go pick up yeah. a weapon. Pick up a weapon, you know, and I'm thinking this thing can take life, and it just handed it to me, right? <laughs> and so, yeah. I mean, former military, I didn't think nothing of it, but, you know, and I brought it home, and I told my wife, I said, okay, I got you this weapon. And I said, however, Right. I said, we're going to go down to the range and have you try this out, do some safety classes and make sure you're comfortable with this. So, you know, what you're doing. You know, and I t the takeaway from that is uh, the first drone I had was a, a, a sharper image DX5, a little small toy. I picked up at Ollie's <laughs> it was on the shelf, I picked it up, brought it home, put some batteries in it and I'm zipping it around the house all over the place and think nothing of it. It's a little toy. And I said, OK, this is nice. This is neat. And then as we got 
more involved with drones and I began to upgrade my skills. I picked up um, a unique Typhoon, a Q500, and yep. I bought it online. Comes to me yeah. in the box. Now I'm flying. So I'm now I got something that goes up 2,000 feet or more, right? <laughs> Flies yeah. around. And I'm thinking, you know what? There is no classes. There was nothing that made me want to do that, but I knew I had enough sense to know I had to, had to take classes, get registered, and all these other kind of things. I think that, uh, just as you said, Jim, getting the word out and making people more aware all of a sudden made me realize how important it is to get to flight schools, maintenance schools, and to the recreational flyers online and offline, encouraging them not only to not only to register, register their drones, but to teach them about airspace. And like you're doing, Lamar, mm -hmm. uh, making people aware of the airspace and how to navigate in and out the airspace, That how important that is. And so, um, just as Jim said, uh, forums like this, and then taking it from the forum and going to the areas where people are flying. And, you know, just in the last couple of years, the explosive growth of drones, just driving from my house to you know, the, the local bank, I, I saw people flying in the, you know, in the uh, parking lot of a strip mall. You're just flying around. I went to visit my sister. They're in the backyard. They're racing drones in, the back, mm -hmm. in their backyard. And, 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 and it, it, these things were just going on. And I'm thinking, wow, it's, it's amazing that how much of drone activities out there where people are just doing things and not, I don't know if they're fully aware, but it just takes somebody like you and I to get out there to make them aware that they're not only their classes out there, that there needs to be some awareness of what they're doing and how they're doing and, and, and the nature of it. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Uh, Brian, is there anything that you can see that uh, can help make a safer environment for drones with AUVSI? It really, it really comes down to, uh, I think we've kind of touched on it, uh, to the manufacturers. And, uh, you know, you, you pull out your drone and you've got all your information on how to set it up and, you know, put it together. There should be something in there too about, okay, now before you fly, here is what you should do. Not only, you know, depending on how big the drone is, getting it registered with the FAA. Um, you, it, there should be some link there. Here's an app you can download that would then show you about this airspace you're going to fly in. And then just even some general, you know, common sense rules um, that they should know about line of sight, not going over 400 feet, obviously not flying over people. Um, maybe there's a little test you have to take, you know, like you have to go get a fishing license and things like that. But I think it does come back to somehow, you know, manufacturers need to put some information in there on what to do. And just uh, um, last month I was out with my son golfing and walking off the green. And I, I heard that familiar little, you know, buzzing noise. Yeah. Sure enough, I look up and there's a drone, you know, 50 feet over my head, right over mm -hmm. us. And I'm sitting there going, you know, th this isn't right. You know, this should not be allowed, but what do you do? You know, and I looked around to see if I could see somebody in line of sight and I couldn't, but right. um, it, just, it comes back to that just from the very beginning you weren't, as soon as you open that box, there should be something there to tell you a little bit more what you should be doing. You can't just go out and fly it. Yeah, it is interesting because I, I look at some of the, the drones that I've owned over time and it, you have to be 13 years old to re register a recreational, but the drones are built for eight and up, 11 and up and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So it does, you know, it's kind of conflicting the kind of uh, uh, sense of word that we're, that's being sent out to the general public. It's like, okay, kids can fly these things and they can, they're probably better pilots than I am, but it still is one of those things that, uh, that is, you know, an awareness thing. But I'll tell you what, Jack, you deal with this on a more consistent basis. And you had an analogy yesterday that was really kind of, I really enjoyed it. Um, you want to share with us what you think uh, could help with the safety environment and what you see? Which analogy was that? Uh, you were talking about the uh, the early days of skateboarding and things of that nature, which is kind yeah, of a so very similar. Go I ahead. feel like, you know, back in the, you know, when skateboarding and, you know, surfing and skiing and snowboarding were all becoming popular, you know, we're kind of at the forefront of that with drones kind of, you know, carving a path. 
Um, you know, going back and touching on what Brian said, I mean, I definitely think that, you know, including something in the manufacturers, you know, about the drone rules and stuff is definitely, it's almost a must. Um, you know, to me, I think having a, a drone license, you know, before you even fly recreationally is, it should almost be mandatory. And then if you want to take it a step further, you should be able to, you know, take a commercial test and um, do that. I'd like to see, uh, you know, if you come into an airspace, you know, that uh, is restricted or something, you've got to put in your license ID or something like that. You've got to be, you know, uh, approved for it, you know, um, and that goes into the technology that goes back to the manufacturers and, the, you know, limiting, you know, what's going on. And, uh, you know, it's, I think it's I think it's eventually going to get there. I think, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's going to be interesting. Well, we are definitely getting ready for an interesting next couple of years. I know that we've got, uh, they're going to put in uh, the unmanned traffic management system, and then they're going to, uh, the registry so that we know who's flying, when they're flying, and why they're flying. Uh, those things are, are in the process of being worked up right now. And when those things start to happen, I think you're going to see the, uh, the industry really grow even greater than it is today. Um, yeah. It is a, uh, it's right around the corner. This is a, it's really an exciting time to be involved in this, this industry. And I'm so glad that I'm part of it. Um, I want to thank you guys for being here today. Are there any questions that anybody would like to ask of our uh, esteemed panel? Well, I got one to ask Jack, if I could. Okay. Uh, sure. As a non-Facebook person, how can I link up with you guys if I'm not on Facebook? <sighs> I mean, we're kind of, that's where it kind of started. We kind of started in May. We've obviously grown exceptionally fast. Um, you know, we'd love to take the next steps to grow it into something bigger at the moment. It's just a Facebook group and a Instagram page. It's nothing really serious, but I mean, the group is serious. Um, so, I mean, I can give you my information. I can connect with you that I can let you know about some of the meetups if you'd like to come join. Um, yeah, That's just connect up with now. through Lamar. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And like one thing to add about safety that I see is that, you know, a lot of the rules out there with the FAA, there it's it's a very gray area when I look at it. You know, it should be maybe a little bit more black and white in areas. Um, but yeah, that's just a an observation. Yeah, yeah, an observation yeah. of it. You know. Well, if you look yeah, at all the recreational the, rules, just as you said, the recreational rules can be a bit confusing. I don't want to say conflicting, but um, they're forever changing. And we have a lot of issues with people yeah. properly interpreting, especially during that operational component of it. Well, especially when they're not getting and you know, just coming out and they're learning on themselves almost. They don't really know the rules. They don't know what's going on. Um, you know, and I'm still learning. I'm still learning as I go and everything. Um so yeah, I mean, like you said, it's just educating people, getting getting the word out there, um, you know, and that that's all we, we can really do at the moment. Yeah, the 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 rules and regulations that the FAA puts together, uh, you have to really, you can't just buzz through them and read them and understand them. You know, people yep. dissect them, and we uh, have to you apply know, them to situations. Yeah, you know? yeah, and and you know, so even some of the key words. You have to look up the FAA definition, mm -hmm. not Webster's de definition, because we just are not the same. And, uh, you know, people say, well, that's not what it says. Well, you know, that's what it means because, no, don't look in Webster's. You need to see what that definition is for that word in the FAA uh, uh, regulation book, you know. Mm -hmm. And, well, yeah, it, it's hard. It took me a little while to figure that out, and I've been in aviation for the longest time. Uh, a lot of people just, they know how to read, but they don't know how to read what's written for attorneys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah, it, it's all the regulations are black, white, and gray all over. <laughs> I guess so. Well, guys, thank you so very much. I If there's not going to be any questions, um, uh, my name is Lamar Ellis, and uh, I guess at the very end, in conclusion, it's not just about flying. Um, there's a lot of that goes into it and being an advocate for safety is really where, it, where you should be if you are going to take a drone into the sky. It, uh, 
again, you just don't want to endanger people or property. And drones can get out of control fairly, fairly fast if you're not aware, experienced, or trained uh, to use them. So uh, thank you all so very much. My company is Drone Education Services. Uh, subscribe to me on social media. And really, we are a big advocate on registering your drone. I saw yesterday that there was a, a statistic saying that there were 20.5 million households that have drones and there are only one uh one million seven hundred thousand drones registered so that's that's less than 10 percent are registered so as advocates please please get people to register their drones it's the one way that we can get this uh community growing even further so thank you guys is there anything y'all want to close with anything y'all want to say just be safe guys thank you thank you also drone pilots <laughs> there you go. I'm yeah. it up, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, this you, was Lamar. a great event. Thank you, Lamar. Thank you, Lamar yeah. and Brian. Thank you. Hey, Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hey, yeah, great to meet you guys. Day. All right. Stay safe. Stay safe. Have, have a great day, guys. Thank you.